Hello everyone, my name is Preston Dennett and today I'd like to talk to you about a very rare type of UFO case. These are cases in which abductees have been given alien artifacts. Uh, it almost never happens, but there's actually a surprising number of cases. Uh, astronomer Carl Sagan, who was very skeptical of UFO abductions, often complained that no abductees had been given an alien artifact. Physicist Michio Kaku has said that if an uh, abductee could obtain a single artifact, it would prove their s not only their story, but ac extraterrestrial existence. Unfortunately, it's not that easy. I couldn't find any cases of anyone who was able to steal an object off of a UFO, but I did found, find at least three, three cases of people who have tried. Uh, one comes from actually the first reported UFO abduction, which occurred to a man by the name of Antonio Vias Boas, on October 16, 1957, in Brazil. It was the first publicized abduction case. Antonio was outside in his, near his farm when a UFO landed and he was taken on board by short humanoids. He was forcibly seduced by a strange female humanoid and then was given a tour of the craft. During this time, he tried to grab a small object shaped like a clock and hide it in his clothes. One of the crew members saw him do this, became angry and snatched the object back, pushed Antonio, and he was escorted off the craft shortly later. Uh, following this incident, he suffered from symptoms resembling radiation sickness. So there are other cases of people who've tried to steal from UFOs. One case comes from J. Allen Hynek, who interviewed a man by the name of Carol Watts. On March 31st, 1967, Watts came upon a UFO outside his home, cylindrical shaped. There was a door open. He walked right up to it. There was a voice asking him to come inside and be physically examined. He refused. Uh, but about a week later, was driving up to his house when he came upon a UFO. Uh, next thing he knows, he's being taken on board by four short humanoids. They were wearing white jumpsuits. They had dark wraparound eyes. He was taken on board the craft, undressed, physically examined, and uh, the ETs walked out of the room he was in and began to look at apparently screens that were showing the results of Watts' examination. Watts got dressed and saw a cube-like device and put it in his pocket. And at that point, one of the crew members came up and took the object back and knocked him unconscious and Watts woke up in his car. Another case comes from Ukraine. A man by the name of Ivan Nikonorovich had a pretty typical abduction. He was physically examined. They gave him prophecies. These were human-like aliens. And uh, they gave him a piece of fruit, which he said looked very much like an apple. Uh, he tried to put it in his pocket, but they refused to let him do that and instructed him to eat it, which he did. So yeah, stealing from a UFO is apparently not a good idea. It doesn't work. Uh, but there are a number of cases in which people have been given gifts. Uh, Betty Hill, Betty and Barney Hill, who were abducted in New Hampshire in 1961 while driving through the mountains. Uh, following towards the end of the experience, Betty asked for proof that this experience was real, and the leader, who was leading her around the craft, agreed and gave her a book. Uh, and uh, Betty held it. It was heavy. She looked at it. It had weird writing inside, uh, symbols she couldn't understand, and she was very excited about it, and they were escorting her off the craft. They opened the ramp and uh, were walking down when one of the crew members objected and took the book back. Betty was furious. She wanted it as proof, and they said, that's the whole point. We don't want you to remember this. Uh, so sh the whole Betty and Barney Hill case could have turned out very differently. Uh, there's another case just like this with Betty Andreessen, uh, whose case was investigated by Raymond Fowler. He wrote a number of books about her case. In 1967, Betty Andreessen was in her home. She was visited by ETs. They gave her a blue book and said she could keep it at least for two weeks, uh, which she did. She kept it for two weeks. They said, don't show it to anybody else. 
Though Beck, she did show it to her daughter, Becky. Uh, it was a thin blue book. She opened it. It had very white glowing pages. There were some weird symbols on them. And uh, she was able to examine it at her leisure for a period of two weeks. She only did it a couple of times uh, before the ETs took the book back. But she almost got to keep it. And some people apparently have kept their artifacts. Uh, there's a controversial case of Truman Bethurum, a contactee from the 1950s who said that he was in contact with human-looking ETs. Uh, they were taken on board his cr their craft several times. Uh, he said the main person in charge was a female by the name of Aura Rains, and at his request, she provided him with a form of uh, if not proof, evidence. She gave him a note, which she wrote and signed, uh, which Truman Bethram did provide as evidence and said it was genuine. This case is controversial, but has never been disproven. Uh, and it fits the pattern of other cases. Uh, take the case of what happened to William J. Herman, an auto mechanic from Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, he was also allowed to keep his gift. His case generated a lot of interest. It all began when he started photographing U.S. foes outside of Charleston Air Force Base near his home. The photographs were very clear, and uh, he thought they were government craft until he started being taken on board and examined by gray-type extraterrestrials. His case generated a lot of interest from the nearby Air Force, from the police as well, and from prominent UFO investigators, such as Jim and Coral Lorenzen. Uh, James Harger was also interested in the case, as was Leonard Stringfield and Stanton Friedman, and also Wendell Stevens, who ended up writing two books about the case. Important here is on April 21st, 1979, a gray appeared in William Herman's trailer and gave him this little bar of metal. It's about three inches long, an inch high, heavy gray metal, uh, like lead. It had symbols scratched into it, has the word man imprinted into it and some weird star-like symbols. And the gray said that this bar was a gift of mutual respect and understanding. William Herman took the bar, he gave it to investigators who gave it to Dr. Walter W. Walker, who actually uh, analyzed the Uba Tuba metal fragments from a UFO that had crashed in Uba Tuba, Brazil. Uh, he was an engineer and chemist, and he did a chemical analysis. He looked at it through an electron microscope. It showed that this object was made of lead. It was a 5% lead alloy. He said the etchings were cast in their position when the metal bar was formed, but that the letters man were pressed in with a blade-like instrument. And his conclusions were it was indistinguishable from normal terrestrial hard lead. This doesn't mean it's not extraterrestrial. Uh, and we'll see that this sort of ambiguous nature comes up in a number of these cases. Another almost identical case comes from researcher Constance Clear. Uh, this case involves a lifelong abductee by the name of Andrew. On March 28, 1997, Andrew had an experience, which he later recalled under hypnosis. He was taken from his bedroom on board a craft. He was examined by ETs. He met a gray ET who said her name was Zedra and that she was the sectional district commander, one of the few females who had attained that high of a position which I found interesting because uh, it shows that even the greys have sexual discrimination in their culture. At any rate, she said the purpose of their visit was that she wanted to let him know that they had completed their experiments with him and wasn't he happy. And he says, no, I'm madder than hell. And she said, well, what, why are you mad? What's mad and what's hell? And Andrew explained that he was unhappy with the experiments because they were painful and scary. And Zedra explained that they have trouble with human emotions and said that if you were in our situation, you would do the same thing. She explained that the real purpose of their visit was that she wanted to give him a gift. 
and she held it out to him. It was a piece of metal. It was a very much the same size as the William Herman case, three inches long, an inch wide. It appeared to be lead, and uh, it was silver and very sparkly. She held it out in front of her, and he took it. It was very heavy, and she said it was rare on their planet, and that if we decide to give it to you, you will find it somewhere. Uh, so about three weeks later, in April 1997, Andrew woke up and found this metal bar on his bedroom dresser. He immediately called Constance Clear and told, him, told her he was coming over. He grabbed the lead bar in his notes and was driving to her office when he was sideswiped by another vehicle. Other gentlemen came out, took his notes, took the lead bar, threatened him, and uh, he complained you know, and said he, he would complain to the government, and they said, go ahead, uh, threatened him, and took off. They're the typical men in black, and this turns up in a lot of these cases, actually. So there are, I know there are other cases of metal bars, uh, alleged alien fragments, supposedly one from a 1977 incident at Fort Benning, Georgia, uh, which has some similarities to these other cases, which I find interesting. Uh, another case involving sort of a metal bar or organic material uh, is reported by Albert Rosales, who put together a number of very important books about the humanoids. Uh, the case occurred in 1942 to a Russian 15-year-old girl named Nelia from Rostov, Russia, who encountered a gray type ET. The ET told her that Russia would be victorious in the war against Germany, World War II, and asked if she wanted to go with them permanently. She declined, and uh, the gray ET gave her a crystal-type object which he said they could use to track her or find her. So a lot of these cases have sort of rocks or crystals that supposedly have a function. One such case c comes from researcher and experiencer Carla Turner, she interviewed a lady by the name of Pat from Floyd's Knob, Indiana. When Pat was just a teenager, she and her entire family were taken on board a UFO that landed outside their farm. This was in 1954, and uh, it was a typical abduction towards the end of the experience. Pat asked the ETs for proof of the experience, and they said yes. They gave her a green healer's rock or stone. Uh, which they had used to actually heal her grandfather of a problem in his legs. And they escorted the whole family back to their home. Uh, most of them didn't remember a lot of it, uh, but Pat remembered all of it because she was very young and uh, for whatever reason she remembered. Except that day, the military showed up and took over the home. They sequestered the family in their home for four days, questioned them extensively, examined all of them, examined all the farm animals, examined their entire property, searched the house from top to bottom, and found the alien artifact, took it, and left. So uh, a lot of these cases do involve rocks or crystals. Another case comes from Thomas Bullard, who wrote a very imp important book on abductions, one of the first. Uh, he talks about a case involving a man by the name of Arno Hainonen, who was given a stone by the beings, the ETs, and told that he could summon them with it. Uh, he reports in another case of a contactee, Miguel Free, who received three gifts, each of which were confiscated by the police or the military. Uh, of course, there's the controversial case of Billy Meyer, which I know is controversial, uh, but it does have a lot of evidence. He says he was given crystals. He says he was also given a metal fragment. What's interesting about this case is this metal fragment was studied by a scientist, Marcel Vogel, who found it did have some very interesting in properties, uh, which were intriguing, because they would be hard to do, and he wasn't sure that we had the capacity to do it. This piece of metal had a very crystalline structure, and it was unusually pure magnesium. So, I don't know. There's a lot of cases coming from all over the world. Hungarian researcher Gabor Tarkali talks about a case which occurred in the summer of 1974 in the Transylvania region of Romania, 
when a group of locals came upon a landed UFO and very tall humanoids who gave them 64 gold foil sheets with these weird symbols and writing on them. And unfortunately, the secret police showed up apparently right away uh, following this incident and confiscated the alien artifacts and threatened all the witnesses. And according to Tarkali, there were at least a few mysterious deaths associated with this incident, uh, which isn't unusual, you know, in cases involving physical evidence, actually. French researcher Jimmy Giu reports on a case which occurred in March 1955 to a painter uh, who had a UFO land 150 feet from his home. He said it was 30 feet wide. He met a beautiful human woman, human-looking woman, uh, and they conversed using hand signals. Uh, the UFO returned three days later with the same figure inside who this time gave the painter an artifact, a gift. It turned out to be some sort of telescope or telescopic device. And it, like many of, of these cases, was confiscated by men in black who showed up after this incident and took it away. Uh, another case comes from researcher Robert Trellins. Uh, it's a very interesting case that occurred to two young teenage boys, one by the name of Manuel Pereira, the other by the name of Jose Soituyo. Uh, they both are residents of Latacunga, Ecuador. On September 3rd, 1966, uh, they were hiking through the mountains when they saw these star-like objects darting around. One of them had a flashlight and he knew Morse code, so he sends out a code to the lights saying, friends, please land. And one of these objects drops out of the sky. Uh, they are invited on board, the two boys. They meet short humanoids who question the two boys extensively. The boys also asked questions, but the ETs refused to answer any of them and uh, started to cut the experience short. The boys asked for proof, for a souvenir that this of this experience, and the ETs gave them this cylindrical object, which they explained was a flashlight like their own, except all you had to do was squeeze it and it would send out a beam of light. Uh, the boys thanked them and gave them their own flashlight and exited the object and started running home and were immediately surrounded by military people in jeeps and helicopters uh, who confiscated the object and took the boys and who were eventually apparently relocated. So there's cases involving artifacts of all different kinds. Another category is food and medicine. Number of cases involving medicine. One famous one took place in 1954 in Petropolis, Brazil. A famous uh, diplomat, his daughter was suffering from stomach cancer. ETs showed up, landed in their backyard and proceeded to do an operation on the man's young daughter and cured her. They gave the family a group of about 50 pills or so, 40, and told them to feed one to their daughter each day, which they did. So there are a few cases like that. A uh, very famous one comes from Wendell Stevens, who actually wrote a book about this case. The main witness is João Valerio of Brazil. Uh, Valerio was a hospital doorman. Uh, one day, a very popular kid in the village suffered a cerebral aneurysm, and the doctors knew that João Valerio was a contactee, so they asked him to ask the ETs if they could provide medicine which Zhao did, and the ETs said yes and provided him with medicine to give to this boy. Uh, the medicine was given to the boy. He recovered from his cerebral aneurysm. Fortunately, a portion of the medicine was saved for chemical analysis. Uh, the chemical analysis was pretty disappointing, though. This medicine looked like brown sugar. It was crystalline in structure. It melted at body temperature. They ran a number of chemical tests on it and uh, were not able to identify it and ultimately came to the conclusion that it was chemically unique. So they don't know what it was. Uh, one case which got a lot of attention is one of the most famous cases of this kind occurred on April 18, 1961 to a farmer by the name of Joe Simonton from Eagle River, Wisconsin. Uh, he came upon a landed UFO in his yard 
walked up to it. There were three figures, short, inside. They were human-looking. Reminded him of Italian descent. He said that they looked very much the same and were good-looking, and uh, they were apparently cooking something. They asked him for water and handed him this sort of alien, weird-looking jug, which he took into his house, filled it up with water. I would have pulled the old switcheroo here, but he didn't do it. Uh, didn't think of it, I guess. For whatever reason, he returned with the water, gave them the jug back, and in return, they gave him four pancakes. He ate one. He said it tasted like cardboard, kind of like cardboard, and uh, kept the other three. The object took off. His case generated a lot of interest because he, had a num he was an upstanding citizen. He had a lot of character witnesses to vouch for his character. And furthermore, there were sightings uh, very close to his home uh, preceding and following this incident. Uh, so UFO investigators were very in in interested. They sent a sample to the Air Force, who was also interested. They sent a sample to the Aeronautical Systems Division of the Air Force Command, who concluded that this pancake was, quote, low protein flour with small quantities of sugar and salt cooked in hydrogenated oil. So in other words, a normal pancake. Another sample was sent to the Food and Drug Administration, which reached the same conclusion. They said the microscopic analysis shows the presence of fat, starch, buckwheat hulls, wheat bran, and soybean hulls. So yeah, <laughs> it's a strange case for sure. Uh, and uh, didn't prove to be alien, but you can't prove it's not. Uh, particularly because this guy has a lot of you know, evidence supporting his case. So I did a study of these types of cases. I put them together in my book, Not From Here, Volume 3. Uh, there are a lot of cases coming from all over the world, separated by wide distances. And uh, they follow some pretty distinct patterns. They fall into four major cases. People are given either books or notes with symbols on them of some kind, or they're given food or medicine or some sort of organic uh, substance like rocks, crystals, or a metal bar, or perhaps a mechanical device such as telescopes or flashlights. Ultimately, these gifts have failed to provide the smoking gun, you know, physical evidence, proof of alien visitations, at least not in the public arena. I think probably some of these cases do have that proof, but they're not available to us. I'm pretty sure we're going to see more cases of this kind. I'm pretty sure that there are contactees, abductees out there who do have alien gifts right now, but are wisely remaining silent. Uh, I think these cases are important for the obvious reason that they do have the potential to prove the existence of aliens uh, conclusively, uh, which is kind of why I put together this video. Uh, I think we should watch out for these kinds of cases and study them more. And I think sooner or later, this kind of evidence, we're going to see it. We're going to see alien artifacts uh, available to the mainstream public, and I'm really looking forward to it. That's it for now. Thanks very much for listening.